So this, in my opinion, is actually one of Shimano's best drivetrains. It's just a pity that they don't actually talk about it. I'm talking about the two by all mechanical cues drivetrain that has potential for truly massive range from 16 to 101 gear inches. That's about 630%. Uh, in comparison, SRAM's Eagle gets you a paltry 520%. And up until now, Q's has only been available for flat bars uh, with a drop bar version promised in some kind of vague and distant future. But that is until today. In today's first official episode of Peak Mechanical, we've got a banger here. I'm gonna share with you a setup I've been running for the last few weeks. I'm I've been testing it on various climbs and terrain, and it's the widest range drop bar two by I've personally run. This video is sponsored by our awesome Patreon supporters and old Old Man Mountain. We'll learn a little bit more about Old Man Mountain later in the video. Okay, so my quest for drop bar cues started a few months ago and actually by accident. There's a bit of an open secret with a micro shift sword or Advent X, and it's that they use the same cable pull ratio as Shimano 10 and 11 speed Dynasit, which is about 1.2, meaning that you could run a mullet drivetrain using micro shift brifters and Shimano Dynasis mountain bike rear trailers. Hey there, everybody. I'm on the bike. I'm testing the MicroShift Sword shifters. This time I'm using a Shimano Dior rear derailleur. And it works. Let's keep all this information in our back pocket for a second. And I can confirm this compatibility since I was running uh, the new Sword shifters which with a Shimano 5120 rear derailleur successfully until it ejected its B-screw that apparently is made of butter uh, during a ride. Uh, I think in a comment in a previous video, someone had mentioned that there were some QC issues with the B-screw specifically on the 5120 after a certain model year, and they stopped using steel screws for the, the B-screw. One of our Discord members, uh, Boothnader, has a YouTube channel called Boost Bike Projects, which is deep bike nerd and he is methodically testing and measuring the pull ratio and cable pull of various derailleurs and shifters. Definitely check out his channel if you're into this kind of stuff. Anyways, he had two interesting videos that caught my eye that really made this hack possible. Uh, the first one is when he measured the pulls of a Q's nine speed uh, rear derailleur, which came out to an average pull ratio of 1.13, pretty close to that Dynasys pull ratio of 1.2. Q's supposedly uses the same cable pull ratio uh, between all their derailleurs, 9, 10, and 11. So from that information, we can infer that the 11 speed Q's should also use that 1.13 cable pull ratio. So, so stick with me here. Uh, so we know at the moment that Dynasys is 1.2 and Q's is 1.13. Not identical, but the difference is pretty small. The question now is, is it small enough to work or does that small difference add up enough uh, so it doesn't work across the entire range of the cassette? In another video, he brought up the concept of compatibility and how there's some flexibility in it. Let's say that there's a little bit of art as well as the hard math. So for example, the cable pull ratio isn't consistent through an entire range. Uh, the jockey wheel doesn't align perfectly and chain alignment also isn't centered uh, throughout the range. And even in perfectly matched components, there is some wiggle room. Basically, I took that to mean that there's generally a margin in which we can play to make things work. So armed with a little knowledge and some optimism, I tried out the Q's combination when I was testing out the sword shifters and my first attempt, it didn't work. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is that this is a lot saggier than the GRX. Strangely, I found that the capacity wasn't there and the shifting sucked going into a smaller cog. I took it out for a few rides and found it a little too bodgy feeling, even for me. So I wrote it off uh, and not quite understanding why it didn't work. A couple weeks later, Panorama sent their Boreal, which is their kind of off-road touring bike. I took it for a short tour out to the coast and was absolutely stupefied by its range. I barely shifted to the small chain ring the entire time with a loaded touring bike. That was super impressive and it made me wonder what was going on. Uh, a closer look at the drivetrain and I was utterly shocked uh, because to my knowledge it was the widest natively supported uh, drivetrain out there on the market. The crankset was a 4026 and the rear derailleur was an 11 to 45 and it was all using Shimano cues. 
So for, for those of you that are counting, that yields a gear inch range of 16 to 101 gear inches or 630% range. Uh, when I got home from that tour, it made me a little bit more motivated to figure out what was going on and to see if I could run that same range with drop bars. It did raise a couple of questions. Uh, you know, if the pull ratios were so close, why was the shifting so bad? Uh, and why was there seemingly a huge difference in capacity between um, the, the derailleur that was on Boreal versus the one I tried? It was all a bit of a mystery, but you know what isn't a mystery? Old Man Mountain. They've been around for 25 years, making some of the most functional, durable, and compatible bike racks out there on the market. And you know, all those words are my love language. You can run them on bikes with eyelets or on through axles or even quick release. They've been doing the axle mounted rack game long before anyone else. They're also innovating with cool products like their new pizza rack. It's a platform rack that integrates with their tactical basket. You can use it as a bag support for Caradice bags or just bungee things to the top of it. New this year is that they've also added water bottle mounts to the uprights and in total it supports 35 pounds, which is just bananas. I'm a huge advocate for functionality and compatibility and Old Man Mountain products ticks all those boxes. And, and because of that, I'm super stoked that they're sponsoring a couple episodes of Peak Mechanical. So check out the link below to learn more. So I decided to order parts and go for an absolutely clean install, if you will, to take out any cassette or chain wear out of the occasion. So I ordered uh, both a new 10 and 11 speed chain. I got a brand new cassette, uh, the, the Dior CS M4100, 10 speed, 11 to 42. It's, it's not the 1145, I know, but 1142 is about the range I want on my Sklar. And if it does work, we can infer that it will work with an 1145. Probably the big key here is I picked up a new rear derailleur, the Q's 8020. The one I had previously tried was the 6020 that was mounted on my RIV that I removed uh, to do that initial installation. This is where things get confusing because while they look really similar and confusingly have the same uh, max capacity as stated on the European Shimano site. Uh, when I held them in my hands, the cages were visibly different. The 8020 that was on the Boreal uh, was visibly longer despite having identical listed spec. So either they're identical and I managed to screw up the installation or the specs were wrong. Did a little bit more digging and found that uh, depending on which Shimano site you looked at, uh, the, the specs were different. The EU said the capacity was uh, 48 but the US side states it at 44 and I suspect that the and I suspect that the 44 is actually the correct one so that explains why when I first tried it it wasn't taking up enough cable slack regardless uh, get the Q's 8020 uh Q's 11 speed 2 by version not to be confused with the 1 by uh, variant the cassette is Dior 1142 and the cr and the crank set uh, because everyone asks is by Dixon Ella Crank and the chain rings are 4026. This gives me a low of 16 gear inches and a high of 99, 587% range. So I installed everything fresh, new cassette, uh, new and wax chain, new rear derailleur. I found the missing capacity with the new rear derailleur and the shifting was much better. Uh, I suspect the previous cassette that I first tried it was worn and wasn't meshing well with the new chain. Next thing I did was to test it on the road for several weeks. I didn't want to make any sweeping conclusions until I knew it would truly work well on the road. So over multiple weeks, I took it on our local paved routes, uh, as well as some chunky gravel climbs, and most recently up Voltaire uh, 2000, an ores category climb in the Pyrenees. And the verdict, I know a long way around here, is that it works, and it works great. What little difference in cable pull ratio doesn't seem to affect it. It shifts well going into the larger and the smaller cogs. I would say it works as well as a full Q setup um, on the Panorama. So if I were to give it a compatibility rank, you know, one, one out of 10 is being just crap, don't do it. And 10 out of 10, it works flawlessly and is officially endorsed. I would rank it nine of 10. So it works perfectly, but without that official endorsement from Shimano or Microshift. I'm gonna put a complete parts list to everything I use below so you can recreate the drivetrain. And as a side note, I should say, if you want to skip all the shenanigans of, of buying very specific parts to get this kind of range, you can always go friction. 
something like our Uno shifter or the new Brifter pods that Soma just came out with. The advantage of going uh, friction in this situation is that let's say you want to go 11 speed from this current 10 speed. All you would need is a new cassette. You don't have to hunt down another uh, very expensive brifter that happens to have 11 speeds. Yes, this is an index hack, but always know, you know, one of my underlying messages in this whole peak mechanical thing is you can always do it way easier uh, for often way less money if you just go friction. So what do you think of this hack? Should I try it out with an 11 to 45 link light cassette? I know some people want to see that. Uh, to be honest, for me, 1145 uh, would be too much <laughs> for for the for the Sklar and how I ride it. That's why I didn't do it. Again, thanks for our Patreon supporters and Old Man Mountain for sponsoring this episode of Peak Mechanical. If you want to see more of these videos, consider joining us on Patreon. And as always, keep the supple side down.